The COVID-19 pandemic has had significant implications for workplaces across the world. These implications extend into the realm of employee benefits, where employers and their workers must make difficult decisions regarding their retirement, health, and paid leave benefits. Hillary Punchcard of BNN Bloomberg reports that according to a recent CIBC poll, 4 in 10 Canadians are worried about COVID-19's impact on their retirement plan. Canadians are becoming increasingly concerned about the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic will have on their retirement savings, according to a new CIBC poll. The findings which were published on November 3, 2020 found that 4 out of 10 Canadians are worried about how COVID-19 will affect their anticipated lifestyle in retirement, with 23% of respondents unable to contribute to their retirement savings since the pandemic began. Of those Canadians who feel COVID-19 has impacted their post-work future, 30% said they will need to postpone retirement due to a loss of household income. The pandemic has also grounded many Canadians' expectations of travel during retirement, with almost 32% saying they would no longer plan to travel or will travel much less than they planned. On the bright side, it seems the past few months have convinced some Canadians about the importance of saving. According to the survey, one in five Canadians said they've realized that they need to pay more attention to their finances, and 19% think it is important to save for their future. The COVID-19 only served as a wake-up call for the Canadians, as the topic of pension and retirement savings has dwindled for an extended period. Now that the COVID has lessened and people are somewhat back to their activities, amidst the inflation crisis going on, we are eager to find out how Canadians have reacted to pensions and retirement plans and what measures have been taken to admonish the pension crisis. Don't forget to leave your comments below, click the like button and subscribe. Despite the financial challenges experienced by Canadians over the course of the coronavirus pandemic, 50% said they've continued to save for retirement, according to a new survey by life insurance provider PolicyMe Corporation. More than half of the survey respondents said they are adding to their emergency funds, while 49% are paying down debt and 45% are making regular contributions to their savings. On average, Canadians put 21% of their income into savings and investments. Defined benefit pension plans and defined contribution pension plans are uncertain about how to incorporate environmental, social, and governance issues into their investment processes in a way that's consistent with fiduciary duties, according to a new white paper from the Association of Canadian Pension Management. Sustainable investing, including ESG, is an area where some investment risks that have been acknowledged for decades are now becoming more acute, e.g. climate risk, said the white paper. How pension plans can, and should, account for ESG risks in light of the fiduciary duties applicable to pension fund investing is an issue that pension plan administrators globally are struggling to manage. This paper attempts to assist Canadian pension plan administrators to understand their fiduciary duties relating to investments and ESG and how to implement an appropriate ESG strategy as fiduciaries. Under Canada's existing legal framework, incorporating ESG considerations and investment decisions isn't prohibited or required by existing legislation, nor is there an accepted definition of what constitutes ESG factors or considerations. The only pension plan sponsors that must unequivocally abstain from incorporating ESG factors is at plans where governance rules expressly prohibit or directly restrict the plan. Sponsors from divesting investments that are based on ESG factors or set parameters for the investment of the portfolio, which is a rarity in Canada. Canadian pension plan sponsors aren't alone in their confusion. In the U.S., rules established under President Joe Biden's administration don't permit pension funds to consider non-pecuniary factors, including some ESG factors, in investment decisions. However, in March 2021, the Department of Labor released a statement saying the rules would no longer be enforced because they had a chilling effect on plan sponsors integrating ESG factors in investment decisions, even where they did have a pecuniary impact. Plan sponsors in the U.K., however, have considerably more leeway regarding ESG integration in the investment process. In 2018, the U.K. investment regulations were amended by the Pension Protection Fund. This amendment expressly requires that statements of investment principles include the trustees' policies about financially material considerations over the appropriate time horizon and non-financial matters, both of which include ESG considerations. In Canada, where similar rules requiring the annual publication of ESG-related non-financial disclosures will soon come into force, the ACPM said it believes it's vitally important for pension plan sponsors to establish clear guidelines on ESG implementation. 
It is vitally important that the organizational purpose and objectives of implementing an ESG factor slash program be clearly articulated and the fiduciary guidelines recognized. A clearly defined purpose will help guide the numerous decisions that will need to be made in developing an ESG program, monitoring the ESG program, and making the necessary adjustment or modifications to the ESG program over time. Canada is heading for a crisis. Today, seniors make up about 16% of the population, but within a generation, that number will grow to nearly 25%. Between now and the next three to four years, over three million workers are expected to retire, but many of them already know they can't afford to. The legacy of wages that barely keep pace with the cost of living plus family debt levels above 160% of disposable income has Canadians struggling to save what they need for retirement. Families are saving money at half the rate they were 25 years ago. The best available evidence shows that half of today's middle-income earners born between 1945 and 1970 face a drop of at least 25% in their standard of living when they retire. The sheer size of the generation about to reach retirement age, combined with inadequate savings will have a dramatic effect on the economic health and vitality of Canada's communities and local economies. Pensions are crucially important to the well-being of workers and their families and the economic health of our cities and communities. Most workers with a pension have a union to thank. In addition to dignity in the workplace and fair compensation that union brings to the workplace, unions negotiate pensions on behalf of workers. But not everyone has the benefit of a collective agreement or a union in their workplace. Without clear and decisive action from the government, many of today's workers and tomorrow's seniors face living their final years in poverty. The key risks to Canada's retirement system are low pension coverage among private sector workers, rising debt and health care costs, which will prove challenging as the population ages. Would the government be able to proffer solutions and mitigate the risks? It's getting harder to save as inflation has increased the costs of living. What other ways can we circumvent these problems? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to turn your notifications on for more updates. Also hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.